I would like to introduce our next speaker, and a very important person, because if it wasn't for uh, Peter Georgievsky, this event probably wouldn't be happening here today. So uh, Peter is the uh, Executive Director of the GDA, Global Dialogue Foundation. To tell us more about his organisation and the work they've done along with the United Nations, I'd like to introduce him. Thank you, everyone. Well, this, uh, thank you for a very, very insightful presentation. Um, I feel like I want to change my entire presentation, but um, from earlier, Melissa mentioned she was concerned about whether our definitions of citizen diplomacy are going to marry and um, or, or meet. Are we going to see eye to eye? And I'm very pleased to say that, yes, indeed, I believe they do. Um, said, my name is Peter Georgievsky. Um, I'm one of the co-founders and the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Global Dialogue Foundation. Um, I'd like to thank ACCESS and AIIA for uh, hosting this event, um, and more so for really stimulating very important discussions and, and establishing dialogue, which is ever so important in our world today. I'd particularly like to thank the ACCESS team, uh, Christian, Jason, and Ghazi. Thanks. Thank you very much, gentlemen. A citizen diplomacy, how ordinary people can change the world. It's a very interesting topic. It's very exciting to begin to unwrap. Because I believe that there's a huge number of communities who are really waiting to express their voice and be part of the discussion in building a more balanced and a sustainable world. So I'm very much looking forward to Ikani's presentation. Ikani, uh, as a Tongan community leader, but also a Pacific Islands community leader, um, is going to share some very interesting perspectives with us tonight, and it will be great to begin to stimulate these types of discussions in, involving other communities as well. <coughs> uh, a little about Global Dialogue Foundation. We work in the field of citizen diplomacy, and we use dialogue to promote intercultural understanding. Um, under the auspices of the United Nations Alliance for Civilizations, <coughs> We aim to uh, initiate and promote dialogue and collaboration in a range of <coughs> practical initiatives among peoples of different cultures to build a more peaceful um, coexistence. The initiatives that Global Dialogue Foundation is involved in is uh, Unity and Diversity Forums, lectures, events. <coughs> Recently, uh, we've, been, we've added Unity and Diversity Peace Gardens, <coughs> online blogging, which hopefully could extend out and uh, facilitate some of what Melissa was talking about. Um, online blogging will come up later <coughs> on in the year. And one of our longer term objectives is to uh, brand unity in diversity cities around the world, where we can begin to raise levels of awareness for unity in diversity being a fundamental characteristic of, of us as humans. Um, so in recent, in a couple of years, the organization's just three years old. However, GDF, or Global Dialogue Foundation, continues over 20 years of work by its founder, uh, who I'd like to acknowledge for his tireless and endless work, um, and for his patience uh, and his mentorship since he met me about four years ago. Um, Global Dialogue Foundation has been working in Australia and India, mainly in the last couple of years. My background is in international freight forwarding and uh, consolidation until 2007. Uh, my friend in the back, who I used to work with a number of years ago, surprised to see you today, nice to see you. I was the managing director and uh, international partner at DGX Asia Pacific until 2007. I was directly involved in establishing several businesses in several countries in the Asia Pacific, grassroots, very painful but very rewarding. Uh, prior to that, I had eight years, and mind you, were lots of fun working for one of the larger operators in the freight consolidation business. I was a young state manager um, and went on to a senior international role based in Hong Kong and Singapore, uh, where I covered about nine countries, traveled from one city to the next every other day, and finished up handling a merger of three group companies that were the largest in one particular trade, which was somewhat of a challenge. But consolidating freight turned into consolidating companies. It was a sharp curve, a little daunting at the time, but definitely helpful for what is to come with Global Dialogue Foundation 
and Project Unity in Diversity, which I've worked on uh, as a full-time volunteer for three years, so a bit over three years now. Uh, regarding intercultural understanding, I'd like to offer some perspectives and some information about what's going on at uh, the United Nations level and what we've been doing. There's an unprecedented cultural diversification of cities around the world, and it demands leadership in every single sector, public, private, included, education, religion and faith, sport, media, youth. And at present, the discourse is mainly comprising state, government, agencies, academic institutions, and it requires civil society desperately. To address this requirement at that international level, the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations has been increasing its emphasis on community-based organizations and NGOs, in, particularly in the recent years. It recently defined its mission to include, and I quote, from the UN High Representative for the Alliance of Civilizations in Melbourne recently, who's also the former president of Portugal, Dr. George Sampaio. He said, the Alliance's mission is to strengthen civil society organizations across the world. Now, many civil society organizations across the world are going to receive this as music because there is a, a huge need, as we understand, to help civil society strengthen. Uh, I, I've got some slides I might flick across. Just some of the events we've been involved in. Um, in May 2011, the Alliance of Civilizations and the government of Qatar brought together 180 or 190 civil society representatives from over, 100, over 80 countries on, on this topic. So there is some action and activity. The Global Dialogue Foundation has been like a, a pioneer in the area of citizen diplomacy to promote intercultural understanding. Uh, and the Alliance has really been supporting us considerably and together we've developed a number of um, initiatives that are engaging communities and NGOs and people from the very grassroots level. Not only to promote understanding, but to really inspire collaboration. As some of you may know, the Alliance is the lead UN organization that aims to promote dialogue and understanding among nations and peoples across cultures and religions and to counter the forces that fuel polarization and extremism. In 2010, Global Dialogue Foundation participated as one of the partners in the third major forum, which was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and in partnership with Vivendi, British Council, and Deloitte, um, Euro News included, our task was to support 10 grassroots initiatives really get onto the international stage and present who they are and what they're doing and why or what their organization is doing to stimulate understanding among different cultures. The inaugural Unity and Diversity 101010 Forum was held in Melbourne, the Melbourne Town Hall, and brought together representatives from several countries across the region, NGOs, government agencies, members of parliament, policymakers, among others. The main purpose was to stimulate community-based activities and their connection to the mission of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, its program, and its partners. Following Melbourne's 10-10-10, a Unity and Diversity Forum was held in the south of India last February, which when I reflect on today, I think, my goodness, how did we ever do that at such a time where Australian and Indian relations were so sour, an Australian organisation was able to host a, uh, a, a dialogue forum about understanding among different cultures. But we have uh, Indian uh, representatives on our board. Our chairperson is uh, of Indian origin. He lives in Dubai. Our vice chairperson lives in Mumbai. Um, and very well respected. So we're able to open some new doorways and bring in different cultures and communities to begin to promote dialogue. And it engaged several countries from around the region around similar topics as those on the board, or those topics on the board, actually. Uh, since then, Global Dialogue Foundation has been presenting events. Uh, one of them was uh, doing business in a multicultural world. That's the Kerala Forum. That's the Maharaja of Travancore, where all those riches were recently found. Um, so doing business in a multicultural world was uh, an event we held in, June, in July, actually, earlier this year. And following that, 
Gordon Dalek Foundation hosted an event with the UN High Representative, President Sampaio, on strengthening the role of communities, NGOs, and business in intercultural understanding. Over 130 different cultures and communities and organizations participated in that event. Recently, the Alliance of Civilizations signed an agreement with the BMW Group to award intercultural innovators, where um, organizations who have been participating in the forums and other programs around the world are beginning to have uh, some, some taller, um, taller goals, maybe sharpen up their work, become more effective in their programs, and really inspire greater collaboration. So BMW and the Alliance are inviting 10 uh, winning organizations for this year to present at the Doha Forum in December, which will be in the presence of world leaders, uh, the Secretary General uh, Ban Ki-moon, the government of Qatar, who's really driving the civil society initiative forward now, who are very interested in learning more about what we're doing. Earlier in the year, in April and May, I had the privileged opportunity to present Global Dialogue Foundation's Unity and Diversity Project at some major international events. One of them was in uh, Baku, in Azerbaijan, at the World Forum for Intercultural Dialogue, and the other one was at the Doha Pre Forum. So, as Global Dialogue Foundation is an initiative that's born out of Australia and gaining momentum at the international level, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to thank all the partners and all the supporters, all the volunteers, my wife in particular who's put up with all of this. Um, and I also would have much pleasure in passing over congratulations to everyone who supported Global Dialogue Foundation. Just the other month, the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, in his official report to the United Nations General Assembly, um, quoted, the regional forums in Australia and India organized by Global Dialogue Foundation and local partners under the auspices of the Alliance, <coughs> allowed the Alliance to expand its outreach and significantly develop its footing at grassroots level. So it seems that citizen diplomacy is becoming increasingly accepted as vital in support of official diplomacy in the field of intercultural understanding. One of the most main focus areas for Global Dialogue Foundation moving forward is to develop civil society chapters that work together under the umbrella of the Alliance so that each culture and community may represent its own voice, its needs and find itself among international organizations um, with like minds and uh, similar objectives. Since 2005, hundreds if not thousands of civil society organizations from all regions around the world have participated in programs by the Alliance and these organizations are really our primary targets for building the civil society representation and instilling the uh, citizen voice at the United Nations level. It's anticipated that a global civil society at the UN under the umbrella of the Alliance will contribute to increasing capacity to promote understanding and collaboration among all peoples and cultures, to reinforce existing industry stakeholders. I know many industry stakeholders have a certain degree of fear when new players come on the market for reasons of taking space, but this is really about the collaboration. But also, mainly, to support efforts towards sustainable development. Everyone here is invited to join the Australian chapter of the Alliance and information and application forms are available. Um, over 25 Alliance of Civilizations member countries are now implementing national strategies and commitments. So this growing trend provides considerable scope for collaboration among civil society and nation states under the umbrella of the Alliance, which really presents a very exciting uh, new chapter to international citizen diplomacy. Uh, I read in a recent UN press release the Secretary General calling for a revolution in our thinking to get out of this mess and uh, with, with world leaders under as much pressure today to write sustainable development. I hope that citizen diplomacy can be integrated as a meaningful contributor and a partner and I certainly hope that tonight's meeting pushes all of us further towards this goal. Mm. So thank you for your attention and I look forward to our discussion.